beam me up is about uh, four lightship keepers who head off to the back of Pluto to bring back a ship and as soon as they step on board they find themselves going heading for outer space. Well, there's four characters. There's uh, Skeptra, who's the captain, who's never commanded a ship before. This is her big opportunity to go into deep, deep space. She's really ambitious. Uh, there is Dr. Kraz. I'm Dr. Kraz. She's a, a child genius, a bit mad in the head. Journey! We have Caroli, who no one's quite sure why is on board, because he doesn't seem to have any function whatsoever. His name's Caster Caroli. He's like the comic relief of the of the film. Although you know, I do try and sort of play him seriously. I do, I do the Italian accent. Who cares? I haven't had a drink in three years. I've been hanging around with an Italian waiter, just to um, just to get the accent, you know. And then there's Waza, who's in love with himself and really should, uh, you know, be a music star rather than on a spaceship. He's the kind of guy at school that, you know, used to get all the girls, and he's kind of got a few similar traits to myself. <laughs> There's one android who's been programmed totally just to service the crew at Happy Hour, and that's her total function. Hi. I'm Aurora. I'm your waitress for tonight's Happy Hour. Please. So at 6 o'clock, uh, it's space time. The bar always opens, but no one has been there for 50 years. any liquid to make drinks with. Get to know the actors better, you know, because really at the end of the day that's all the movie's about. You know, you can have all the technical stuff and all the style that you want and everything else, but if the performance is rubbish, then you're, you're wasting your time. We can spend a good hour or so before we actually do a scene. When we come in here, we will rehearse it, we'll walk through it, and, you know, any suggestions oh. that come up will, will come up. And also I'll be working with Irvin Welch too in August. So it's all exciting. Although I didn't, didn't train as an actor, I mean, um, of course I've done all the studying, read all the books, you know. Yeah. I've still got the crack in the head I received when I was hit over head with a Singapore sling. Standing by, Rachel. OK, everybody, pictures up. Robbie wrote it for me, which is really, really nice. This is my third film at Robbie. I was told by chance that, I, uh, that we met, uh, met at a wedding. It was a, an actor's wedding, an Irish actor's wedding, and um, Robbie had worked with both actors before and he's doing the, the wedding video. <laughs> and so I suppose it was like an audition. <laughs> but um, we got on really well. I met a guy at Cannes, I said, so what do you do? He says, I direct. I said, do you ever do any camera work? He goes, no, I direct. I said, do, do you write? He goes, no, I direct. I said, do you ever edit? No, I direct. I'm thinking, what the hell does this guy actually do? I can live without it because I can guess what this is. This is a 5.6, you know? Yes, he's extraordinary. I mean, normally avoid cheap lighting because you can get all sorts of pulsing and, and flicker effects, but he seems to have got these, these B&Q spot lamp, lamps and they're working all right. It's amazing, isn't it? <laughs> I'm the art director, um, plus because we've got a very, very small crew, I've also taken over props as well. Starting from the first day, I didn't obviously didn't have any time and I was working completely on the spot. We're working as they're rehearsing, you know, we're kind of right on top of each other. 
um, the schedule's changing all the time and I haven't had much time to pre-plan. This is what I was presented with when I first arrived. Effectively this, I kind of imagined that I'd walk onto a set, you know, that had already been made effectively and when I arrived here. I was just like, oh, <laughs> When I first arrived, I'd sort of have a cup of tea and just have a look at anything that could be used to either disguise the walls or to sort of enhance what, what we had. So you get a pretty good view of all the skips from up here. I had a fish around and found all sorts of quite interesting things. And um, there's actually some empty film cans, the sort of silver discs that you see like dotted along the back wall and stuff, and they were in piles and piles outside. I tend to not request any money unless I really, really need it. I engaged quite well with, you know, not having very many materials because it makes me use my brain. Everybody stand by, quiet! It's very different what you see on film to what you see with the naked eye. Just, I mean, there's been some occasions where I've just seen things and I'm like, well, that doesn't, that doesn't look right to me. But when you see the rushes the next day, it's actually fine. Okay, action. I think that I'm getting what Robbie is wanting from this. Hope so, anyway. <laughs> Wait a minute, Carole, you don't think this stuff is real, do you? That unique taste that you can't just snuff it. Why would I? Why would I? I, well, I don't think it's do. real. Well, I, I, you want me to drink it? Yeah. What is this? No, you can do it when you come to do it if you want. Free pickup. <laughs> I mean, too space for me. You like a sunset, sunset yellow. <laughs> Party's over. Closing time. I'm well known as a science fiction designer because I was principal designer on Doctor Who. Designing this production of these astronauts that are going on to an endless journey where they actually live their whole lives in space. And that gave up some challenges for the costumes. I mean, sometimes I think the greatest creative opportunities that you have are caused by the fact or by that you haven't got money so that you have to be creative. What I don't particularly like about the film industry is this obsession with budgets, because budgets are not, not true budgets, you know, they're paper budgets. They're, and why, why should someone come up to the street and say to me, and which happens regularly, goes, well, what's the budget you film? And I just tell them, well, I'm not telling you, it's my business. I get a finished cassette. About sort of 36 hours after shooting, I start getting cutting as quickly as possible. It's a space movie. It's got an interesting script. Do you remember Barbarella? That, that's sort of where we're going with this in terms of costumes and things. It's fantasy space. But it's extraordinarily quick. This, I mean, this is a low budget film, so we're hoping to have the whole thing cut within three weeks, literally a few days after the end of shooting. It's, it's quite a tall order. There'll be lots of late nights, I should imagine. We got a call on Saturday morning asking us to call the courier, and um, I thought, well, I didn't think much about it. Uh, but it turned out that uh, we'd lost two cans of film, that can 108 and can 109 had uh, disappeared off the back of a courier's bike on the A40 on the way into London. Uh, the rest now is uh, to finish by 9 a.m. tomorrow morning. Are you on, are you on, are you on course? Yeah, pretty much that. You know. uh, this is for the editor, but he never uses it. He just sleeps on the couch. You know. <laughs> We've been working hard, haven't we, Simon, on this film? Yeah, yeah, look, he, he didn't go to bed last night. He came in this morning and he's lying on the sofa. <laughs> What's that purple bleed at the top of there? It's the magnet in those speakers on that radio. I should think we should take off there. Oh, is that, is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. 
Oh, that's a bit of Simon. Sorry about that. <laughs> I worked on films like Clash of the Titans, The Warlords of Atlantis, films like that. We've done recently, um, well, Da Vinci Code was the last uh, picture we've just finished. This is a massive ship that they're on. There's 10 floors. I think it more is the Titanic. Um, we have somewhere. Uh, oh, here we are. This was our original drawing, uh, a sort of thumbnail sketch of what we were, you know, the sort of spacecraft we were looking at trying to build. This is normally on a bigger production. They obviously, they've got art departments, designers. Um, and, you know, many people are involved. Uh, in this case, it's, you know, a thumbnail sketch and it's a case of interpreting that, which is quite nice in a way because it gives us an element of freedom. Yeah, that was good. Uh, I think I had a pretty clear vision of what the spaceship was. It's just a cigar shape, you know, something like that, you know. But then a wee bit fatter, like a Zeppelin, you know. I think a Zeppelin's like that, isn't it? And it's got a little wing thing, it's like a fish. I haven't seen it. These days it tends all to go in the computer. An opportunity like this, it's, it's an excuse to sort of go back to the old days, really. We've dusted off all our old kit and uh, haven't relied upon the, the, the CG area. Look at that. Hey, that that works for me. Wow. Wow, yeah. Rough pump that we did. Just a very rough, so. No, I think it's really good. You know, I think it should match in with what we've shot. And compared to my original drawing, this is, uh, you know, much, much better. I mean, I just drew a fish. I am very optimistic about Beam Me Up. Beam Me Up might be onwards and upwards and uh, to the far and beyond. We, who knows what's going to happen? It's a fantastic movie. It's going to be great. People are going to flood along to see it.